Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this reading. This is a pick a card message on the subject of your next big manifestation. There are lots of really lovely cards in each pile, but to choose the pile that you're going to go to, you can pick from one of the cards above. Just choose the colour that you feel most drawn to. We've got silver, rose, purple and lemon and then click on the timestamp below the um, in the description box. Thank you so much for your kind support, for the bookings, for your comments, likes under the videos and um, everything else. Really appreciate it and also it's just great when you share these videos with your friends as well. It helps me to grow the channel and to share my messages with more people. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I hope everyone's well out there, well and staying calm and peaceful. And yeah, I hope you're making good use of this time of reflection and of huge transformation. So that's all I'm gonna say for now. I just hope you enjoy your reading. Go ahead, click on the timestamps below well, on one of them, or two. Some of you like to choose more than one. And I um, hope you enjoy your reading. Bye. Okay. So if you chose silver, your message overall is be persistent. Silver is the card of persistence. And you're being asked to continue with the plans that you had maybe just before the lockdown or plans that you've had for years that you haven't been able to see through to the end and you're being asked to trust yourself trust your judgment trust that you've made the right decisions and that you're on the right path but that things just haven't quite come together in the right way for you yet but that doesn't mean that they can't they still can so be persistent Things have things not working out so far doesn't mean that they're not going to. It doesn't mean that your plan isn't meant to be or that it's not quite the right plan. Um, it means that you're being asked to just stay focused and to, to fight for what you want a little bit. And you've also got the card of life review. So at the moment you're looking at everything, you're taking an inventory of, of where you are, who you are, how far you've come, what resources you've got, inner and outer resources, what, what space is there for you to actually create what you want to create. Um, you know, who can you ask for help? Who can you offer help to? Where, where can you collaborate with people? How can you ask people to be, um, you know, to, to be reasonable and give you more space to create what you want to create? Where do you have to make changes? Where do you have to cut back on communication with others? Where do you have to think about reassessing the work that you do to support yourself? It's a, a huge review of everything in your life and whether or not they're currently supporting your bigger vision, the thing that you have to be persistent about. So this is a great time for drawing up plans, for strategizing, for deciding, deciding what stays and what goes, what no longer serves you, what doesn't support you on your highest path and what therefore needs to go. And for some, this is going to mean a huge change, like uh, a change of home, change of residence, um, leaving a relationship or um, collaborating with someone new or just trusting yourself much more. It, for some it will mean um, just moving to the other side of the country that you live in. For some it will mean forming um, alliances with new groups of people. For some it will mean just trusting your creative vision. But it does look like a huge shift because you've got life review and you've also got the card of comfort which means that you're being comforted by the angels as you make this change. So for some it will be emotional in nature and for, for others it will just feel emotional and a bit scary because it means that you're being asked to make a big leap which it's, involves really trusting yourself or doing something you've never done before or doing something that you think you can't quite handle or that involves taking a big risk, a bigger risk than you're ready for or than you think you're ready for. It could be that you're out of the habit of taking risks, that you've been playing safe for a long time now and you are being asked to take your power back because that's the card you've got next to comfort. So 
the message is that you can do it, whatever it is, this big leap, this big change that you know you have to make in order to make your life work, in order to bring your dreams to fruition, whatever that is, you are being asked to go for it and you are being comforted as you take those steps. You're, you're, the angels are literally holding your hand and helping you to go forward. I've just seen an image of a baby taking its first step, so baby steps. So for some people, this will be the first time that you're going out into the world on your own. It doesn't matter what your age is. You might be um, leaving home for the first time, or you might be well into adulthood, but just feel as if you've never experienced that independence. You know, maybe you've been um, in various situations where you've given your power away, or where you've felt a lack of faith, a lack of trust, a lack of belief in yourself and you're being asked to just take that risk and take those first few tentative steps and trust that you will be supported and you'll be comforted as you go through the difficult stages of leaving behind what's safe and familiar and launching into something that's much more promising, much more bright and that will in the long term bring you much more stability and peace, personal peace. You've got grounding as well and you're being asked to go deep, to explore your roots, to explore your feelings, to do the deep healing that you need to do. Why are you in this place in your life? What brought you here? What can you change within yourself? What is it that you need to see within you? See and heal and let go of so that you can move forward. You've got clear the air. So for some it will mean that there's a conversation that needs to happen, that you need to let people know what your intentions are, what your thoughts are, share how you feel. There could be stored up tensions and conflicts that haven't been resolved within you or with the people, with you and the people around you. Um, there's been a lot of um, lockdown emotion, let's just call it, brewing between, you know, people who are stuck at home or who have been stuck at home for a long time, some with families, with family resentments that haven't been ever been expressed or that have just been there hovering in the air and it's time to clear the air. It's time to clear the air before you take your next steps, before we all take our next steps out into the world again so that this period will have been a period of deep, deep healing and realisations and dawning maturity is what I've just heard. Maturity of all souls and between all souls and within all relationships. You have ahead of you a wonderful new beginning. So it's it's like the first few steps of a new journey, a new you, a new experience of being you in the world. It could be a new project, but you know, it's like you've initiated a beginning and you're about to take those first few steps. This is being reinforced here by the Two of Wands, a new creative beginning that you've just taken the first step towards. And you're just looking ahead of you and seeing what's there, what's out there for me, what's possible bright new horizons, things that are waiting, magical things that are waiting to fall into place when you take those first steps, when you trust yourself, when you let go of the familiar and when you take a leap and know that you'll be supported, that you'll be held and that if necessary you'll be caught and you're being asked to remember the many many times when you've been caught and you've been held before and you know when you're in touch with spirit they never fail you, they never let you down, however tough some of these decisions and choices may seem to be. Trust that. And you can always go backwards if you absolutely have to, but you won't have to. Go forward in full faith. You've also got the Hierophant, and I feel that for some it's going to be about a time of respecting traditions, respecting time-honoured ways of doing things. So if you're setting out on a new path, creating a new venture, a new business, a new journey, it could be that you need to make sure that you commit to it fully and in the right way. And this will also make it easier for you to stay the course rather than going going back. So, you know, put it out there in word, pronounce it that this is what you're going to do. Take the steps and make those steps concrete and, and make those steps committed steps. Um, so follow through completely. Also, for some of you, this is about stepping into a role as a, as a teacher of higher spiritual knowledge. And 
if that's the case for you, you're being asked to trust that just as you teach, you can also learn. You can also learn from the things you teach and you can learn from them how to make life work for you. So for some, it is about following a higher spiritual calling. It's about stepping into that calling finally, once and for all, and allowing it to help you to create a life that honours who you are, that allows you to respect who you really, really are and who you're truly here to be, here on this earth to be. For some of you, it will be a commitment to um, a relationship. For some of you, it will be a whole new beginning. It could be that you've discovered how committed you are to someone as a result of being, you know, locked away with them or locked away from them for a long time. So because this can be a card that um, indicates marriage, depending on what the cards are around it. But whatever it means to you, um, just take it as a sign or a message that it's time for you to commit to something new now, not just to speculate or dream about it or believe that it's possible, but to actually make some decisions and put them in form. And your card from the vortex, I think it's getting into the vortex, um, is our very behaviour adds to the planet's well-being. So it's really important that whatever you're leaving behind, you leave it behind with with a sense of peace, with a sense of love and appreciation, rather than feeling resentful, because everything that you've experienced, everything that you've been through up to this point, has taught you something about who you are. It's added a richness to your life, to your learning, to your overall experience, and ultimately your understanding of yourself and of what makes you truly happy. So bless it for that, so that when you move on, you don't attract any more of the same kind of negativity because everyone has the right to be who they are whether we agree or disagree with the way they are they they are on their own journey they are making their own choices for better or worse they at the end um, will have to um, face their own judgment will have to deal with the karma, the, the consequences, the cause and effect of everything that they've done. And alternatively, if they are actually quite benign, but you're, they're just not quite in sync with who you are anymore, then it's even more important to recognise that we're all different. We're all on, on different paths. We're all making different choices and everyone is adding something to the planet and even those who are adding something that we would perceive to be negative are showing us what we cannot tolerate anymore what we cannot tolerate personally and individually and what we will no longer tolerate on this planet so it's all adding richness in its own way even by default so that is the consciousness that your guides that spirit want you to take with you into the future to try to see everything through the eyes of love or through the eyes of God or through the eyes of perfect understanding you know it's a bit it's a bit much to ask sometimes you know when those situations have been less than helpful um, to, to see things to, to ask you to see things from such a saintly perspective but you're being asked to just bring yourself at, at the very least bring yourself into a place of balance and harmony and self-love and respect and forgiveness before you move into your next into the next phase of your life because that is the vibration that you need to clean up for some who who've uh, opened this message and who are receiving that final card there are some hovering residual resentments hanging around in your life in the biosphere of your life that you need to clean up in order to get the very best out of the life that's ahead of you Okay, that's it, group number one. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you did, please be sure to comment and um, like the video and share it. And, you know, just get in touch with me if you'd like to work with me. If not, I hope you um, just enjoyed it. And yeah, come back next time. Okay, bye. Okay, so if you chose the rose card, then your message is attract a relationship. So, and I just want to say, 
that that can mean so many things on so many different levels. For some of you, it is time for you to be connected to one other person or to feel a divine connection. And for some of you, it's really about attracting friendships. It's about attracting the right groups. It could be even about attracting your tribe. But for many of you, it will be about attracting a love relationship. Take it however it works best for you. And um, we'll just read through to see what the other cards are that connect and, and that are around it, that inform it a bit more. So you've also got hello from heaven. So the feeling that I get with this is that you have someone helping you in heaven. It could be a loved one that's passed on. It could be a guide or a teacher that you've specific, or an angel, yes, or an angel that you've specific, <laughs> my guides have just said, or an angel, or an angel that you've specifically asked to help you with this aspect of your life. So it could be that you've been talking to Archangel Samuel and asking about your twin flame or your or a soulmate relationship and um, you know just wondering when that's going to happen for you. So this is a message to show you that you are being supported in that. You are being supported in creating and attracting fulfilling relationships in all areas of life. Um, fulfilling relationships at home, fulfilling relationships in love, fulfilling relationships in work and career and with your dreams, just people who see things in a similar way. It's really important for all of us to come together with, with our tribe now, with our soul family, or with people who feel like family. Family doesn't necessarily all, always mean the people whose lives you were born into or the people you gave birth to even. So this is really a card about attracting relationships based on love and and community and spiritual connection and shared consciousness, shared awareness, uh, so that you can move ahead in strength into the future. Um, you also have career transition. So my feeling about this is that you are also in a phase where you are about to manifest relationships that will support you on your career path. So you're about to manifest different people coming into your life, possibly a partnership, um, someone that you can work with as a partner um, in love and in work. Um, and it, But it's also possible that you'll just be attracting the right people to assist you in your career, whether that's the right teachers to help you to learn new skills or the right partnerships to, to help you to actually feel as if you've got people who are with you now rather than against you or who are you know championing you rather than questioning you also creative writing comes up so for some it's going to be really important for you to write out your manifestations to get really clear about what it is you really want because you might have a vague idea about what you're trying to manifest but you haven't actually written it down at any point and when we write things down or we voice them, they become much more powerful. So it could be that it's a good time for you to start writing your thoughts down. And um, for some of you, this transition, this career transition will be about a transition into a creative writing career or um, any kind of writing career, journalistic writing, spiritual writing, um, factual writing, um, sp you know, writing um, about spirituality rather than writing stories. But it could be creative writing. Um, so just take that however it resonates. But this is your next big manifestation, which is hugely exciting. So if you chose this group, this is actually really standing out to me more than anything else. Career transition and creative writing, those have just started to light up. So for someone who's come to this reading, that's a big yes. That's really important um, confirmation for you and I'm being asked to just mention it. So now let's get back to the others who are um, attracting new relationships and attracting a career transition. So attracting a career transition at this time means that you are moving onto a path that is much more aligned. Everything that you're manifesting now, your next big manifestation I feel is alignment. So becoming more aligned with the highest version of who you really are is going to mean for you that you attract a career that suits you much more, you attract a relationship or friendships that suit you much more, that make you happier, that make you feel more joyful day to day in your day to day reality. 
You've also got the card of compassion, which says soften your heart with respect to this situation and all the people involved, including yourself. So it could simply be that there's a letting go happening here. There's a letting go of one thing so that something else can come in. Letting go of something that is not of the, the right vibration or of a high vibration. Moving towards what's light, moving towards what feels really good is a very strong theme because the light on this card is really beaming out golden light really shining out from the card at the moment as I look at it um, intuitively so it's a really important time for you to move away from what feels heavy what doesn't feel right what just pulls you down into you know a negative vortex what doesn't hold you up it's time for you to have someone or something that makes you feel as if you can stand strong without always having to explain yourself, without having to, you know, feel just slightly out of sorts or feel that, oh, this is a per another person whose energy you have to clear just so that you can feel okay. This is about attracting in people whose energy is equal to yours, is who's, or is harmonious with yours so that your day begins from a place of a level playing field if you like you can wake up feeling good again and focus on what it is you're here to do on this planet so I know my empaths will understand that cleansing waters is the next one they've drawn me to so it's really important to use water to clear your energy as well at this time so that you can continue to see things clearly so that you can continue to stay calm as you make this transition as you begin to bring this manifestation about some of you are going through a heartbreak some of you are going through a disappointment and it feels as if there have been too many disappointments in recent years and they're drawing my attention to the 10 so for some of you it will be the last 10 years or so 7 to 10 years they've said seven to ten years that have felt very very heavy and as if you're going round in circles carrying the same old weight carrying the same old burden meeting the same types of people again and again seeing them mirroring back to you the bits of yourself that you don't love or that you haven't healed again and again you know old childhood wounds coming back to you in the form of people who disrespect you who put you down who mistreat you who who try to squash your plans and your dreams before you've even managed to get, you know, through the first stage. All of that is trying to dismantle itself in your life right now and you're being asked to release control. You're being asked to surrender to the journey of life. You've got surrender to the journey here as well. And you're being asked to trust that good things are coming in. And the card that you've got from the vortex, getting into the vortex, is I can find harmony by feeling for improved thoughts. So if you chose the rose card, it's quite possible that your thinking is one of the things that's currently getting in the way. And I know it's not always easy to, to search for those thoughts and to find those thoughts when we feel as if we've been through the mill, basically. Basically. but do whatever you can to find those thoughts is what I've, I'm being told because all the shapes and the pieces and the puzzles puzzle um, aspects elements in your life are coming together they are trying really hard to come together because your manifestation skills must be excellent but what happens you know you're great at visualizing you're you're great at knowing what you want even if you haven't written it down and been explicitly clear you've got an overall idea of what it feels like but what stops you is letting your thoughts get in the way doubting it judging it and i think creative writing can help you with that as well so in other words if you do write it down and you give it more structure and you even give it an element of planning, that will help you to stay in a positive space. It's when it remains just a, a dream, um, you know, just a vision, just a, a, a big picture, that it can sometimes be a bit difficult to hold on to that vision on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what you're ask, being asked to do, to colour your day-to-day -day reality with thoughts of what it feels like to live in the reality that you're creating, what it feels like to live in your manifestation, to fill your moments with thoughts of that and to, to not get derailed into other areas. And if you can't stay focused on thoughts of what your manifestation feels like, then let go. Just, you know, watch some comedy, 
read something that uplifts you, exercise for a while, play some great music, stay in that great space. I've just suddenly, <laughs> saying all of that, remembered exactly what Abraham means, you know, about um, just staying in the vortex, staying in that. That's what that's about. It's about even when you can't reach for the, the um, improved thoughts, don't reach for the other thoughts. Do what you can to stay in a neutral place or an uplifted place until the better thoughts start coming back to you, start occurring to you. So I hope that makes sense. It's just another way of saying the same thing again. But um, I think this is a really powerful and wonderful time for you if you chose this um, reading. And um, your next big manifestation is a higher quality and a more supportive and loving quality of relationship all round, including the relationship that you have with yourself. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, Rose um, Card Choosers, and um, thank you so much for just letting me know if you enjoyed that, and um, sharing this reading with your friends, and get in touch with me if you'd like to work with me. Okay, okay. if well, you thanks. chose purple, your message, your overall message is develop mental clarity. So why do you need to develop mental clarity? Well, the implication here is that you've had some very foggy thinking recently. You haven't been able to find your way out of certain problems and issues that you've been having, certain challenges, certain difficulties that you've been struggling with for quite some time now. And one of the things that has been blocking you from having that mental clarity and holding on to it has been your lifestyle. So first of all, I just want to say, I'm sorry if it sounds boring, but it's really important in this reading, that you need to change your lifestyle. You need to develop healthy eating, um, healthier eating patterns. So more, you know, include fruits and vegetables, more fruits and vegetables, m drink more water, get to bed earlier. No one's telling you to take anything out. Sometimes it's not about taking anything out. That's, you know, your choice, your decision. It's your body. But if you start adding good things in, it will help to re-educate your taste buds, your body, your inclinations, you know, your your um, cravings, if you like. You can re-educate yourself to want different things overnight, like in a, in a matter of a couple of days, you know, at the most. So just start on that now because what I feel is that as you do that you will raise your vibration up again into a place where you'll be able to hear that wisdom and guidance much more easily and the more you sleep the more balanced you'll feel and the more you'll be able to think clearly just on a purely biological level and I also feel that for some of you the the lack of the healthy lifestyle has been sort of triggered by stress, some of the stresses that a lot of us been have been under. And um, for you, good health is going to be about self-care, deep self-care, trying not to spend too much time in the company of people who uh, make you feel depleted, um, who cannot stand in their own energy and do some of their own healing. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, but I do feel that's a strong message for some of the empaths and healers watching this, that you need to spend time recharging yourselves and you need to be able to say no. And that will help you to come back into balance. And also, I've just heard clearing your energy as well. Clear your energy. Maybe you need to clear your energy much more now because there's so much going on and because we're absorbing so much toxic energy from the fear and the anger and the general upheaval that's happening in the world at the moment. So stay calm. Staying calm will help you to develop mental clarity. And your next big manifestation is, it's difficult for me to actually get a grip on this. I'm trying to see which of the cards really stands out for me. Right, okay. It looks like the Nine of Cups and Expand Your Horizons. So what all of this is leading to, all of this stuff that sounds like, oh, more boring advice about health and diet and oh, overcoming difficulties, what it's actually leading to is a bit of a new adventure here, something that leads to a great deal of joy and emotional satisfaction 
satisfaction. Coming through a time of solitude, moving away from a time of deep introversion. So it's good. So you have done some of the work, but unfortunately, people sometimes still intrude upon your time and your precious energy is what I feel. feel. And I'm um, being drawn to the sensitivity card as well and being asked to remind you that you are extra sensitive right now, extra sensitive to emotions right now. And you need to honour yourself and your feelings. It doesn't matter if people are not being um, malevolent or cruel or, you know, deliberately um, trying to upset you. If your energy feels out of balance or um, more toxic as a result of being in someone's company, you need to more than ever just withdraw. Just go to another room, go to another space, shut the door, you know. Just light a single white candle, do your Palo Santo, just sit quietly and meditate and get back into yourself. Do an energy clearing meditation or something, you know, just to make sure that you, you get back into your own space, your own thoughts, your own um, sovereignty and autonomy. You know, bring your energy back together in that space and just focus on um, just coming back into presence with yourself. Because what I feel you're, you're manifesting now is the ability to move into something much lighter beyond this period of solitude, which actually feels as if it's been quite heavy in a way. It's been difficult for you to actually get to grips with finding the answers to dealing with some of the difficulties that you're in, which could have been overwhelming you for quite a while. And I feel that you've gained a lot of healing in the solitude, but it's time for you to now know that you don't have to spend the rest of your days that way, that there is something bright and new waiting for you. And it does involve a great deal of emotional joy and satisfaction and fulfillment. So it, you know, for, you, for this group, your next big manifestation basically is happiness and peace of mind. That's it. And You've also got the Seven of Wands. I do feel that there could still be a little bit of, um, you know, some more challenges to overcome. And I'm not saying that they're going to be anything like what you've been through so far. No, it's more a question of um, seeing very clearly what you need to change to make things better, to achieve your happiness, and actually standing up and fighting for that. So, you know, standing your ground, saying, yes, this is what I want. Yes, this is what's going to make me happy. You know, I know, <laughs> I know we're not really flying just yet, but, um, you know, a lot of people are still not even leaving their homes yet. But there is an adventure calling to you. And at some point that adventure is going to call you beyond your own familiar shores. It could be that that adventure is calling you to begin a new course of study because my eyes are being drawn to the nine on that nine of cups right now. And my guides are talking to me about nine how, ninth house issues. So for some of you, this is about life purpose, uh, manifesting the life purpose that's going to make you truly happy. For some of you, it's going to be about teaching. Um, becoming a teacher. For some of you, it's going to be about a new course of study that is going to um, put you on the course that you've always meant to be on or that you've always wanted to be on. For some of you, it's going to be study that enriches the work that you do already, that brings back the happiness, the freshness, that freshens up your your work or your, your teaching or your lifestyle in general, or that gives you a new sense of purpose. So, um, and also for some of you, you will be connecting with a new philosophy, a new way of seeing the world, a new way of seeing life, um, you know, maybe even a new kind of spirituality, a new uh, way of viewing things that gives you that sense of infinite possibilities and more excitement. So your manifestation, a great deal of it is internal and it's something to do with self-belief and self-directed, self-determined life purpose where you stand and you say, no, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about this. It doesn't matter what I thought was right about this or wrong about this in the past. What matters is that when I do this and when I connect with the energy of this activity or this particular life path, I feel joyful. I feel alive. That's what you've got to focus on. So that tells me that it's right for me and that is worth fighting for. OK, so and your card, your manifesting card is um, from the vortex, getting into the vortex from uh, by um, Esther Hicks is I can stop attracting don't wants, 
by attention to do once. So if you've been on a path so far that brings you a lot of um, a lot of aggravation, a lot of misery, a lot of negativity, maybe even negative people um, leaning on you, you know, putting pressure on you, um, making life difficult for you, challenging, what, whatever it is, or if it has actually just put you in the way of these difficulties that we can see here, just, you know, situations that are just always, just make you feel as if you're constantly battling through something. You can stop attracting that by focusing on what you really do want. And I'm again being drawn to the Nine of Cups and I'm being told to say to you, focus on your happiness. Focus on what brings you the real joy, the greatest joy. And I'm sorry to quote Marie Kondo again, but what sparks joy in your life, in your friendships, in, you know, the food you eat, you know, the clothes you wear, the places you go to, and definitely, absolutely the career that you do, the life path that you follow. If it doesn't bring you joy, it's really time for you to start coming up with a plan for how to actually change that. And that will help you to overcome any difficulties. You also got um, the card of Archangel Shamuel here. Uh, beloved one, I'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. So this is another aspect of the happiness that you're coming into in the future. But I do feel that you need to focus on your own personal happiness and fulfillment first and stand up for that. Show yourself that you can stand up for that. And in future, the kinds of relationship, personal relationship that you'll attract will mirror that back to you as well. Or you'll find the relationship that you're in transforming around that new self-belief. Or, you know, you'll you'll just find that you're you're totally happy with yourself and it, things will just evolve naturally and organically um, at the right time, with the right person and in the right way. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. That's another really powerful one, very interesting one. And if I was to sum it up in a word, I would say just... Um, well, not in a word, in a sentence, I would say, and I, I don't want to keep quoting people, but the Joseph Campbell quote about following your bliss, follow your bliss, follow your bliss. Uh, you know, sometimes when things get said over and over again, they become a bit of a cliche and we stop feeling the meaning behind them. But really, really stop and ask yourself, what is it that makes me truly, truly happy? And um, yeah, get ready for the adventure of your life. Okay, that's it, purple people, <laughs> purple people. Yes, thank you very much for watching this and um, take care, speak to you soon, bye. Right, so if you chose lemon, then your message is all about accessing innovative thinking. Your biggest manifestation actually is going to be prosperity and abundance. That's what I feel drawn to in this spread. And I also feel that there is a kind of mirroring there with the fact that you've chosen lemon. You know, you've got this, this other kind of um, colour that's sort of on the gold spectrum. And... Um, brightness, optimism, manifestation, ability, prosperity, abundance, freedom, joy, all of those words are coming in here. So I really do feel that for you, the key to your um, feeling that there is something to celebrate still this year, I've got to put it in those terms because that's what I'm hearing, is going to be about attracting new abundance, new prosperity that gives you back your freedom. That's how I'm hearing it. Gives you back your freedom, gives you back your self-respect. Just had to say it the way it was coming through. Okay, so um, you have the card of nurture. So you're being asked to nurture yourself at the moment, just as you would nurture a child, take care of yourself, um, you know, just wrap yourself up in love, give yourself all the rest and that you need, all the rest and the sweetness and kindness that you need, because, you know, you've obviously been through a lot, it's time for you to really take care of yourself. And in taking care of yourself, you are going to come to a place where you begin to understand what it is, what that magic, magical golden key is that is going to open the door to your success and abundance in a way that has eluded you for many, many years and for some of you, a lifetime. So get really, really clear 
about what you want and what you desire and focus on it with all your heart and soul and might. Focus on it without wavering. Have complete and utter faith that you can do exactly what you're hoping to do, what you set out to do. You are hugely gifted. You have many, many, many gifts, gifts from God. When I see this card, I always know that this is um, a message for someone who is gifted in many different areas. This may have, and seeing these two cards together, crystal clear intentions and gifts from God, this tells me that you may have been very scattered in the past and you almost have more talent than you know what to do with, more gifts than you actually know how to begin using. So you you're, you've spread yourself very thin. You're doing too many things at once, or you know, I'm that's a judgment. You might not be. You might love that. That variety is great. It can be really fun and rewarding. I know that personally. But this spread is asking you, and it's just about this spread. It's not about anyone judging you or telling you how things should be or saying how things should be for everyone. You know, different things work for different people at different times. But in this particular reading for you from Spirit, the message seems to be that the clearer you can become right now about the one thing that is the most important to you at this point in your life, the better it will be. Because these many, many, many gifts that you have won't leave you but they are scattering you and spreading you a little bit too thin. So your abundance will come from focusing on one thing, just to, to put it in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, that's kind of what we're leading to here. So, and that is your next big manifestation. Your next big manifestation is to trust the one thing that you really, 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 really love doing and really want to prioritise and really want to focus on at this time and let it bring you the prosperity and abundance that will buy you more time to do the other things in the future. Because at the moment you're chasing your tail a little bit, trying to do all the things and not really getting enough reward from any of them. That's my feeling. Okay, so we've got follow your bliss, which is really spooky because in the last message I actually told them to follow their bliss and you've actually got that in writing here. So it applies even more and if you chose the one before and this one then it applies doubly. Follow your bliss. Navigating by the stars. I love that message. What a great, some of these cards are just so wonderful. Navigating by the stars and that can mean um, employing astrology and looking into your chart and seeing what it says but I really feel you don't need to look at anything or ask anyone about what it is that you really truly love and desire to do so for me navigating about navigating by the stars actually in this reading means following what's what's brightest following what really lights up for you and following what lights you up from the inside in, from the inside because we are all stars you know we are made of stardust and so we we need to sp sparkle and shine a bit and if something actually sets you alight with that electrical kind of energy then you are sending that energy out into the world in a really positive exciting and beautiful way so trust those stars trust those stars you know you don't have to ask anyone else to tell you what you love. You've just stopped trusting it because you've somehow stopped trusting yourself. And we all fall um, prey to that at some point. And it's a part of our growth and development. It's just another step along the path. OK, so now you're being asked to wake up to that again and to follow that bliss and renew your passion and pleasure for life. Yes, savour your life. Do the thing that makes you enjoy life the most and it will lead you to a place of abundance. There is something in your life that needs to fall in order for you to live at this high level. And it feels kind of terrifying for you at the moment. When I see the tower, I don't think, oh, something dreadful is about to happen. This idea that something is about to happen, it's not real because you're creating it, you're manifesting it. You may be at this very moment manifesting the, the downfall of something that does not serve you anymore, that is blocking your progress, that is holding you up in life, that is just not working for you. And you've got right next to it the Page of Pentacles, which can be read in so many different ways. I feel that when I can relate it to the Tower, 
it kind of feels like there's somebody very immature around you, someone very, um, very young in their attitude, their outlook, their behaviour. So, um, and you know, this is not the traditional interpretation of the Page of Pentacles, but it's what it looks like to me in that combination right now. It looks like someone or something dragging you back into the past, dragging you back into old ways of seeing things, having little niggly complaints, little petty, small thinking and ideas that they want to focus your mind on. And, and it's just stopping you from moving ahead. And it's time to let that go. On the other hand, the Page of Pentacles can also mean that you are in a place of being at the beginning of a journey. You know, there's a lot for you to learn. There's a lot for you to learn about yourself, a lot for you to learn about following your bliss, about navigating this path of this vision of who you are, what you really want to do in the world. And, you know, you're you're at the beginning of that journey. But I also feel that a lot of this is to do with um, where you have let your lack of spiritual maturity keep you in resonance with other, let's just call them energies, that are in a place of spiritual immaturity, dumbing yourself down spiritually, dumbing down to fit into circumstances that were kind of temporarily, um, I don't know, if convenient is the right word, or if they were safe, they made you feel safe, they made you feel things were okay because you didn't have to take those big risks, but it's become uncomfortable now. It has become uncomfortable and it's time for you to step out of it and take those big risks because what's on the other side of it is incredible. Um, what's on the other side of that tower, you know, is amazing. I th think it's the star that follows the tower or the sun or something really bright and amazing. So, okay. And your final card, your card of getting into the vortex is relationships I don't want clarify those I do want. Relationships I don't want clarify those I do want. So this is a period of getting really clear about what you don't want by looking at what some of the relationships around you, some of the relationships around you that may be toxic or that may be, yes, immature or, you know, um, limiting in some way, they're not a bad thing. They're just where you were at that time. And noticing those relationships, what they do in your life, how they make you feel, how they limit you or, or how they mirror back that unhealed limitation within yourself, Noticing all of that, taking it on board, accepting it as it is, can help you to get really, really clear about what it is that you do want in your life in terms of relationships. Though it might be that you look at someone or a couple of people or a group of people around you and you think, right, everything that that is, I want the opposite of that. So it helps you to clarify, you know, if these people are, um, I don't know, uh, small minded um, then you might think, right, I definitely know that I want people in my life who are expansive thinkers, who are plugged into the collective, plugged into the infinite, plugged in, you know, connected to God. If this is someone who is, um, you know, maybe, and this is no um, reflection, no criticism of atheists, everyone has their own belief system and their right to that, but you might have people around you who say, oh, I'm an atheist, I don't have any interest in anything spiritual, or, you know, I don't believe in any of that, or whatever, you know, there might be people in your life like that. And if you're on a spiritual path and you want more than that for yourself out of life, you might, this might be the time when the rubber hits the road and you finally say to yourself, actually, I can't have that in my energy anymore. There is no room for that anymore because I'm committing to a spiritual path in life or through life. And you might say to yourself, well, actually, from now on, I want people around me who at least are willing to acknowledge that there might be something more. Um, this is an exaggeration. This is a really um, exaggerated example. But for some of you, it will resonate. And for some of you, um, you know, in the interest of being very allowing, very generous, very open, you may have invited people into your life who have been only too aware of your openness and your generosity and have actually been feeding off of the energy of it 
whilst also doggedly, determinedly not wanting to pursue their own connection with the divine. In fact, rejecting it, you know, <laughs> rejecting it out of hand, but at the same time, supping from its cup via you and your kindness. I'm sorry if that sounds really heavy. I'm not sure where all that... <laughs> Well, I do know where it was coming from, but I don't know exactly who it's going to resonate with. And um, but I know it's it's here for someone. So I hope that helps you, and um, I hope that helps you to clarify your next steps. Your journey is looking very interesting and very abundant and prosperous, if you choose to honour yourself at this point. And that is really your next big manifestation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and um, yes, be in touch if you would like to work with me or just comment and let me know what you thought of that. Okay, take care. Bye.